So we're at the point now where we can start rotating a point around the quaternion. Sorry about that pun. And we're going to define the point that we want to rotate. It's Points and vectors are basically the same thing, remember. And so we're just going to put our point in the vector part of a new quaternion that we're going to call P. So in other words, we're going to make a quaternion and the vector part of that quaternion will be the point or the vector we want to rotate. And now we're going to do our operation with this quaternion. And then when we're done, the result will be sitting right here in the vector part. So let's do it. The rotated quaternion, this is the formula that we're going to use, is Q, P, Q, inverse. And if you're like me, you're looking at this equation, you're like, what, how, how, what, how does this work? One question that I have is, why don't this this Q and this Q inverse cancel out? You're telling me, you're telling me that you rotate the point and then you do the opposite rotation and you get something that's not just the original point? So if you were, but remember that order matters in quaternion rotation. Order matters a lot. If you had P, Q, Q inverse, well, now this Q and this Q inverse would cancel out and you would just get P. But that's not, that's not what's going on here. The Qs are on different sides of the P. Okay. So at this point, I want to bring your attention back to the original definition of a quaternion. If you remember, it was cosine theta over 2 and sine theta over 2 times this normal vector that's our axis of rotation. And we never did answer the question, why theta over 2? Why theta over 2? And maybe, maybe this gives us a little bit of insight of why we, we seem to be only rotating halfway. When you left multiply this Q right here, when you do this operation, you're only rotating halfway. And then when you right multiply the inverse, you're rotating the rest of the way. So, um, and this works because, again, order matters with quotation, with, uh, quota with quaternions. Multiplying on the left gets you a different result than multiplying on the right. When you multiply on the left, it's sort of the same thing as when you multiply on the right by the inverse. So we get, we get a, we get a, Q times P becomes, I'm just going to make it a P double prime Q inverse, where P prime is half rotated to where it needs to be. And then it multiplies by Q inverse and you get the rest of the rotation. But why do we have to do this? Why can't we just rotate it all the way at once? Well, the answer is four dimensions. Remember, we're, rota we're rotating this thing in four dimensions. And let me see if I can draw a graph to try and illustrate how that works. Uh, this this y-axis is going to be the rotation that we do in the fourth dimension. That should look like a D. And this graph over here, I'm going to squeeze it in here, is the other three dimensions. Dimensions 1, 2, and 3. Okay. When, when we start rotating, this is what happens. This is what happens right here. We're rotating in all four dimensions at once, but we only want the rotation in the first three dimensions, the dimensions that we can see, the dimensions that we know. We're three-dimensional beings, not four-dimensional. So we can only see the first three rotations, and rotations in the fourth dimension will mess up all of our mojo. So we don't want these four-dimensional rotations. But if we just multiply Q times P, we're going to get a point here. It's halfway to where we want to be. We want to be over here on the right. Fully rotated in 3D, but not rotated at all in 4D. So how do we, how do we undo the four-dimensional rotation by, while at the same time doing the rest of the three-dimensional rotation? Well, that is where this Q inverse comes in, my friends. That's why it's there. When you invert the quaternion, it turns around the four-dimensional rotation and starts winding it backwards. 
But since you're right multiplying it, it continues with the regular three-dimensional rotation. And so, so what you're doing is you're rotating halfway in just like that. This Q right here, this Q right here is this half. And this Q inverse is the other half. So that's the logic. Now let's let's take because this is two quaternion multiplications, and we covered quaternion multiplications in the previous video. It's a very complicated formula. Um, I'm going to give you the simple version here. I'm going to simplify it for you. I'm not going to do these steps because uh, they're kind of involved. I'm just going to write out the result. And by the way, if you want to see the the derivations of all this work, I will put in the video description the name of a book that actually has all this stuff so you can see how, how all the math works out. I'm not doing it because it involves some, some imaginary and complex numbers that I don't want to, they're really not in the scope of these videos. Um, but if, you, if you're curious and you want to see then check out the description for the, the name of that book. So, this is what it comes out to. If you take this, these two multiplications, expand them with the, def with the definition of multiplication that we came up with last video, and simplify them, you get this right here. So it's the original vector plus these two rotation factors. That actually should look pretty familiar to you. We saw something very much like them in the in the first in the angle axis video we did and it, the the Rodriguez formula um, which was not named after me and if you actually take this equation and do a few trig identities and a little bit of linear algebra on it you can actually get back to that other equation we did in the previous video they're actually the same operation just one is done with angle axis and the other is done with quaternions, which is pretty cool. In any case, I'm going to stop ranting. Let's go to the code and implement all this stuff that we've, that we've done in the last two videos. So over here in this quaternion file, I've implemented already the, uh, the multiplica qu quaternion multiplication and vector transformation functions that we discussed in, in the previous two videos. I'm not going to go through implementing them, though, because I want to spend all my time uh, focusing on what the quaternion does and showing you an example. If you want to see that code, if you want to examine it, uh, the link is in the description. I have it all up on GitHub. So check that out. Now let's go and, and see what we're doing here. So I'm, I'm making two quaternions. The first one has an axis of rotation, 0, 1, 0, and our y axis is the up and down axis, right? So this this axis of rotation goes directly up and down, which means it's like looking your head from side to side. And it's 90 degrees. 90 degrees is positive, and positive values default to, to counterclockwise values. In math, we always rotate counterclockwise by default. So this is like turning your head 90 degrees to the left. And then the second quaternion we have is uh, the axis of rotation is the x-axis, which is straightforward, looking straightforward. And if you already turn your head to the left, then using the x-axis as your, your axis of rotation is going to tilt your head up to look up at the ceiling. Uh, but see, 45 degrees means halfway. So our, first our head will turn to the left, and then we'll look halfway up to the ceiling. And we want to do these rotations one and then the other, one and then two. But this is just like matrix math, where you have to do the second uh, the second rotation, you have to do the first rotation last in your list. So just like, just like uh, matrices, imagine that there's a point here, a V or an, or an X that you're trying to rotate, and see how it, it gets rotated by Q, it gets rotated by the last thing in the list first, and then the product of that is multiplied by Q2 and so on. So we, we, want, X, we want Q1 to happen first, so we're going to put that last in our list. And then I, I print out what happens, print out the contents of these three quaternions so we can see what happens to them. Let's go and see what that does. So, uh, quaternion one, here's the W part, 0 0.707. That's a, that's a, a 90 degree um, rotation. And then here is the X, Y, Z. You can see that the Y value is the only one that has any, has a, a non-zero in it. So this 
This will turn our head 90 degrees to the left. The second quaternion is 0.92, and the x, y, z values are 0.38, 0, and 0. So its axis of rotation is the x-axis, because this guy, this guy um, is the only one non-zero one, and that's that's the x right there, x, y, z. But remember this guy, this is our w, but with quaternions, one means no rotation, and zero means uh, means a lot of rotation, means 180 degrees of rotation. And so don't let this 0.92 fool you, because that means almost no rotation, it's close to one, and one means no rotation. So if it were zero, it'd be in a lot of rotation, but it's 0.92, which means we're only looking up a little bit, because we're not looking completely up to the ceiling. We're turning our head left 90 degrees and then looking halfway up to the ceiling. Now I, I did the, the math, the Q2 times Q1, and this is the quaternion that it produces. Now if you do, if you do the math, if you find the magnitude of this quaternion, you will get a unit quaternion. So this squared plus this squared plus this squared plus this squared is equal to one. It's pretty amazing how that, that invariant um, is satisfied. And look at our axis of rotation here, 0 0.27, 0 0.65, 0 0.27. What, what does that mean? It's very difficult to picture that axis of rotation unless you work it out in your head. It goes forward a little bit and then up a lot and then right a little bit and then it rotates mm, 0.65 maybe about halfway it I mean if you can picture it in your head that's great but quaternions this is very difficult to picture so let's continue um, and just rotate a vector with it and see what we get we're going to rotate the vector one let's move this down so you can see what I did q3 which is our which is our result vector, the third one, Q2 times Q1, and we rotated vector 100 zero, zero with Q3, and here was, here's what we got. The X part is zero, the Y part, the up part is 0 0.707, and the, the Z part, the right part, is negative 0 0.707. So we're looking up and left. Remember the Z part right is positive, but it's negative, so we're looking up and left. That's exactly you know what what we wanted to do. That's great. Now let's slow it down and see and break this this rotation up into two parts. Um, let's rotate one zero zero with Q one first and see what happens. And you can see that we get we got rotated ninety degrees. So we got rotated. Uh, we we used to have one zero zero and now we have zero zero negative one again. Negative one is left. So this is our head looking left. And then we take that, this should say a negative one right here, not, not one. We take that zero, zero, negative one, and we rotate it with Q2. So here, we took the rotated, the product of our rotation with Q1, and then we rotate it with Q2. Let's move this guy out here. And you can see that uh, it gives us the same result as, as when we just rotated with Q3. And there you have it, uh, right? That about sums it up for this video. Next video we're going to look at how to do slurping, spherical, linear, interpolation. We're going to get started with that process. See you then.